Once there was a woman who stood at the edge of a cliff. It was a sunny midsummer's Friday. A strong breeze brushed her skirt and troubled her hat. The woman had traveled all day to arrive at this place. A bus, a train, a walk alone to the cliff from the railway station with her handbag, her hat, and little else. Boarding the train or walking up the hillside, she still instinctively reached out for a tiny hand. There had been a child, now 18 months gone. She looked down and saw the end of the land, recognized that she was an islander and that this horizon was the edge of her world. Perhaps she arrived. This landscape remembers. It remembers every footfall and wheel roll, bears each of these as lines on its face to be read and mapped and remembered. A few feet away from us, Simon was creeping around the church counterclockwise. In each hand was an L-shaped metal rod about a foot long with a black plastic handle. One of these dowsing rods was pointed down at his side, while the other was held close to his chest, aimed forward. The Old Red Albion is uh, a book that consists of a series of uh, walks, exploring a series of walks undertaken within the South Downs um, in search of these places where landscape, memory, and myth intersect. There's some very, very personal parts of it um, about my family, and then there are some parts that are to do with mythology and folktale that are ages old and, and perhaps true, perhaps not true, depending on your definition of truth. From the top of the stone, I looked out onto a land that I had never seen before. It was Jaffa orange and ember glow red and pebble blue and most of all, whole palettes of greens. Moss green, juniper green, fern and forest. I could almost reach out and touch the textures of the land, the thorny snatches of conifer, deciduous clumps, the pools of stone and still water. It was oceanic. Each individual plant or pond or stone was subsumed by the 